Uh, Hannah Bennett says, hi, where do you fall politically? I'm a pretty hardcore lefty, I would say. I am firmly against the uh, platform of the Republican Party, and I support the platform of the Democratic Party. So the Democratic Party has sort of like the double benefit of being a good platform and also being, you know, uh, the best way to to fight against the Republican platform. Uh, yeah, Leaf007 says, should kids be able to vote? You know, I, I like 18. I think 18 is pretty fair. I'm open to arguments that we should lower it back to, we should lower it down to 16. Uh, it feels like the, the way that the world currently is, there are a lot of political issues that are specifically affecting children around the age of 16 and above, you know? Like, I don't think it would be a bad thing necessarily for kids to have a say in gun control legislation, for example, since these are the kids that are, you know, uh, having to worry about getting shot whenever they go to school. And climate change, you know, like, this is the planet that they're going to be inheriting. And so I wonder if we wouldn't encourage a little bit more civic engagement younger if we allowed kids to have a say at 16 and to have them really think about it. You know, I was completely checked out of politics when I was in high school and college. And uh, I feel like the issue there is that I didn't really have a good idea of how politics could affect my life. But these kids have a real, they, they, they know, you know, they really do know. Uh, Hannah Banana says, oh, Democrat? Nah, lesser of two evils. Uh, yeah, but the lesser of still e two evils is still lesser. You know, it's still better. This is one of my big political principles is that better is better and worse is worse. So it's like, yeah, you could do a protest vote because you believe that Democrats are the lesser of two evils and that there's no value in supporting that system. But then you get the greater of two evils. And that seems bad also. James says, no more soy boy in mama's basement. Um, I was actually in your mom's basement last night. Angel Martinez said, why did Trump not pardon the January Sixers even though he had time to do so before he left office? I think he was scared, if I'm being honest. I think that the fact that the the... The insurrection failed. I think he was planning on it succeeding. And I think that he recognized that he was in a lot of legal jeopardy. From what we can tell of, you know, from unconfirmed reports from inside the White House, uh, we know that he was, he was being told by everybody, like, you have no idea how fucking serious this is. It's the entire reason why he put out that video that was like, you guys are great and I love you, but please go home, you know? He wanted it to succeed, it didn't succeed, and he recognized that he was in legal jeopardy, and he was like, this is going to be even worse for me. I need to start separating myself from this immediately. And so uh, I believe that that was the impetus. I believe that he was too scared to pardon the January Sixers, even though he had time to before he left office. Uh, Tina says, tell me why you would vote for Kamala or Trump. Well... Uh, I would never vote for Donald Trump because he's a terrible person and he was a terrible president and he's a terrible human being. So, like, there's literally no good reason to vote for him unless you are rich or a racist. Uh, if you are... But Kamala, I can give you a lot of reasons why you should vote for her. She will support the middle class. She will tax the rich and use that money to help ease the financial burden of life on the rest of us. Uh, she will continue moving this country towards a green energy sector, and that is sorely needed, because I don't know if you guys have looked outside, but climate change is here, and it's really fucked up. Uh, yeah, and just, you know, uh, she is a responsible adult, and Trump is not, you know? I think we should have a president that doesn't need to tweet in all caps, I hate Taylor Swift, just because Taylor Swift didn't endorse her, you know? I think it's awfully strange that so many Republicans and people that work in national security have said that they are not going to vote for Trump, especially people that used to work with Trump are like, I would never vote for Trump. So, you know, it really seems like this guy's dangerous and a terrible person. And a lot of people are saying not to vote for him. People that know that, the, that you shouldn't. And also 16 Nobel Prize winning economists have all said that uh Harris's economic plan is better than Trump's. In that includes Goldman Sachs, which is not necessarily a liberal organization per se, so they really don't have any value in saying that Harris's plan is better for the economy. So yeah, there's a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons. User a bunch of numbers says, why is it liberals refuse to see reality? Uh, how do you know that it isn't you that can't see reality, user with a whole bunch of numbers? You know, I'm up here with my full-ass fucking name on the live stream and my face. You're just a bunch of fucking numbers and no profile pictures, and yet you're going to claim 
that I don't have a good grip on reality, that I don't know what's really going on in the world. Also, every major study has shown that people that only listen to and check out right-wing media have are less informed and have a loose, looser grip on what's actually going on, on the truth. 17% accurate is what I believe the last uh, data said about Fox News. So think about that. Uh, Hannah Mason says, is it possible to get widespread ranked choice voting? It definitely is. You know, we would just have to pass a bill. So we would have to elect politicians that would be uh, amenable to having ranked choice voting. Now, also, ranked choice voting is, uh, you know, it's not a cure all. It's not a magic bullet. We had ranked choice voting in New York for the mayoral election in 21 or 22. I forget. And uh, we still elected you know, Eric, uh, Eric Adams to be mayor and he sucks. And we had a great progressive on the ticket named Maya Wiley and she just didn't win. So, you know, ranked choice voting is great, but it's not going to solve everything. Uh, Mr. By Midnight says, what's your best get as to what MAGA did before 2016? It, you know, it's, it was sort of like a germination period. You know, they were, they were in their cocoons waiting to bloom into the, uh, you know, far right radical extreme party that they have become, you know, the Republican Party was always on this descending, you know, slide to authoritarianism and, uh, you know, racism and xenophobia and uh, white nationalism. And Trump was just happened to be the right person for that to fit into that mold. You know, he is not some political genius. He is just, you know, he was just very lucky that uh, America was buying what he was selling at the time. What's your take on the Green Party? I... I don't take the Green Party seriously. I don't take any party seriously that is, um, you know, trying to run for president, but not actually building up any local or state support. Like, why aren't Green candidates running for state and local elections? Why are they always doing these, you know, moonshots for president? Uh, I've also seen some evidence to suggest that Jill Stein is a Russian operative. You know, I saw her on Mehdi Hassan's show, and... She really did seem like she was not willing. Oh, yeah, it really did seem like she was unable to call Putin a war criminal, which I find very suspect. Uh, is the 25% tax cut on corporations a good idea? No, they have plenty of money. Uh, they could stand to be taxed more. Uh, SM says, why don't people understand how much Israel interferes in our elections? I mean, uh, why don't they understand that? I don't know. I guess you would have to ask them. Um, but yeah, they. I mean, any... Any organization that has a lot of money and influence is going to try to get their fingers in the American election because America is a very powerful country. And so there's that's a big get. You know, it was a big get for Putin when Trump got elected, for example. Uh, my best buddy keeps telling me that Kamala wasn't voted for to be president nominee. How would you reply? Uh, I would say that technically she was voted in because she was on the ticket with Biden. And then when Biden stepped down, it was the natural position for the vice president to take over that spot. Uh, number two, nobody ran against her, so she, we didn't have anybody to vote against. She was the natural person to be the nominee. And also, only Republicans are trying to make this into an issue. Every Democrat is fine with this, and it is the Democrat Party, which is, again, which is a private organization. They're allowed to nominate whoever the fuck they want. They are the ones who oy, moved Kamala to the top of the ticket as is their right. It was completely in line with their bylaws. There was literally no shenanigans there. Uh, why have they promised for four years to tax the rich and change the tax code, but still have not done yet? Well, Dan Isler, that is because uh, in order to get things done in this country, you need consensus in the House and in the Senate. And, you know, we had a couple of big bills, a couple of big ticket items that the Biden administration was busy working on. And there were two uh, senators, specifically Joe Manchin and Kristen Sinema, who were against certain changes. Like they did not want to increase taxes on the rich. They did not want to get rid of the filibuster. They did not want to expand the Supreme Court. They did not want to try to uh, hurt companies that were polluting. You know, there's a, you know, the, the carrot and the stick methods of incentivizing companies to do things. And they wanted only carrots and no sticks. And so they had to make adjustments, you know? And that's what bipartisan government is. That's what compromised government is. And it's the reason why we had, why the Biden administration was able to pass the first bipartisan infrastructure bill in over a decade, the first bipartisan gun control legislation in over a decade. And they were still able to pass the Inflation Reduction Act, which represented a the largest investment in green technology in our nation's history. Uh, you know, so... 
you know, there's a lot of stuff. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff there. Anytime you're wondering, like, why something didn't get done in government, like, you got to look at the people who are in government and see what they want. Like, there are people who complain that Obama did not codify Roe versus Wade when he had the supermajority in 2008. But if you look at the politicians that were in the Senate back then, there were not 60 votes to protect abortion. And also they thought that abortion was safe because it was legal precedent. So... You know, uh, they decided to use that time and that political power to pass the Affordable Care Act instead, and that saved a whole bunch of lives. And so, you know, uh, it was a political calculation. And But people are like, oh, it would have been so easy for them to do it. It's like, no, they wouldn't have, you know. I will refer you to Joseph Lieberman and a whole bunch of other uh, centrist moderate Democrats that they would have needed their votes for. Uh, Tyler Joe says, why can the government not get wasteful spending under control no matter the party? Um, well, you know, the government is, it's massive. We are a country of 300 million people, and uh, there are, I think, hundreds of thousands of people that work for the government. It is, a, it is a huge machine that, on the best day, is going to operate with a little bit of uh, wasteful spending. Um, but I would encourage you to think about the money that the government spends not as a waste, because there's a lot of things that the government does with our money that are extremely useful, you know, building roads, having a post office, maintaining our GPS satellites so we can all get GPS in our phones and we don't get lost when we're on the highway and shit like that. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I just don't like that narrative that the government is wasting tax dollars because they're spending it on good things. You know, there are people who are alive because of our tax dollars. And I think that that is a very patriotic thing uh, to, to do with your money. Paolo says, who would you say is the better candidate to vote for Kamala Harris? Every Democrat is better than every Republican. Uh, and that's, you know, that has to do with candidate quality, but it also has to do with the platform. You know, like vote for the platform that you want to be enacted. And the Democratic platform is, you know, Climate change, we should do something about it. Gun violence, we should do something about it. Taxing the rich, we should do something about it. Uh, you know, abortion, let's protect women's rights to bodily autonomy, you know. Uh, Trent says, accept me or you're scared to debate me. I'm not scared, you just seem <laughs> you just seem kind of annoying. So I don't want to talk to you. I also, I don't do debates. I find debates very unproductive. Cleo says, is Trump getting paid from Russia? I mean, his, his companies have been funded by Russia, so he is financially indebted to Russia. That is... Uh, definitely the case. Uh, do you believe in a change for Congress involving term limits and single bill voting? Uh, I do. You know, anything that will make the process of passing things more streamlined and also anything that will make it so that we are not run by a gerontocracy of extremely old people. Uh, that is, you know, doesn't seem great. Doesn't seem great. Let's have some uh, term limits so we can get some generational change in government and uh, let's make things a little bit easier for things to get far, things to get done. Uh, what do you think about the fake electors indictment? Well, you know, there should, there should be some consequence for trying to subvert our democracy. And so I think that everybody who was involved in that scheme from the state actors all the way up to Donald Trump need to be criminally indicted. Uh, your boyfriend says, opinion on Israel. Israel is currently being run by an authoritative right-wing a uh, politician named Benjamin Netanyahu. It is an extreme right-wing government that is not trying to advance the um, is not trying to advance the goal of peace in the region. They are trying to inflame tensions for a couple of reasons. Number one, Netanyahu knows that he is legally vulnerable, and the longer he stays in office, the longer he stays out of jail. And also, Netanyahu knows that Trump will be a much more sympathetic uh, president of America than Kamala Harris and will let Israel do whatever the fuck it wants and send Israel tons of bombs and guns and well, they won't say boo if they continue to do war crimes against the people of Lebanon and Palestine. So, you know, Netanyahu understands that the more he inflames tensions in the reason, in, in the region, the safer he will be politically, but also the better it will be for him potentially if Trump gets elected. He thinks that if there's more war in that region that it's going to hurt uh, Harris in the election here. And, and that's what he wants to do. So that's part of what he was doing. But I, as always, I am for the populations. You know, I think that the people of Palestine, the people of Israel, the people of Lebanon, they deserve to be protected. 
they deserve to be protected from war crimes and indiscriminate bombings and shit like that. So if Israel, if the right wing Israeli government wants to go to war against Hamas, then let them go to war against Hamas, but just leave the fucking citizens out of it. And because Israel is not leaving the citizens out of it, then I think that we should not be sending them any more money and any more weapons. That Slick says, do you honestly think that Netanyahu is doing this because he cares what Harris thinks? Yes, absolutely. Who the president of America is, is a huge thing. And if you get a sympathetic right-wing authoritarian like Trump, then you'll be able to do then you'll be able to do more authoritarian right-wing things in your country, and you will get more support from America. And that is something that is very valuable to Netanyahu. Slick. Your boyfriend says, I agree. I say we don't send him nothing. I'm down for that, too. And honestly, the only presidential candidate who's going to be amenable to that is Harris. We can yell and scream and protest all we want to the Trump administration about how we don't want to send any more weapons and money to Israel. And not only will they continue to do it, but Trump has already said that he thinks we should shoot protesters in the leg and also that he will deport protesters if we're there protesting something that he doesn't agree with. So, you know, uh, let's see here. Let's see who we want to be in office. Just like based on that, maybe. Uh, Ducky Day says, thoughts on making election day a holiday? I'm for it. I have always, I want to make voting easier and I want to make it, something that people can get excited about and that they do all the time and that they can be better informed about. I am a voting person. I want everybody to vote. The top of our voting percentages right now is 65%, and I, fer I believe in my bones. I believe down to my heart that the country gets better the closer that number gets to 100% participation. So yeah, let's make it easy for people to vote. Mail-in ballots, uh, you know, early voting, uh, you know, vote by mail, uh, and, you know, giving people the day off to go vote. Uh, Democrats don't care about our rights like our First Amendment. They are the party of censorship. Well, Truth Network, are you aware that at a speech recently, Trump said that if you criticize the Supreme Court that you should be thrown in jail? That's not <laughs> taking the First Amendment seriously. That's literally censorship. If the, if the government says that you are not allowed to criticize them or you'll be thrown in jail, that is censorship. So... So sorry, Truth Network, but, uh, you know, you got to go, man. David High says, do you think photo ID should be presented while voting? What are the pros and cons of this? So here's the thing. Republicans say that they want voter ID because they're worried about voter fraud. Even though voter fraud is such a per small happenstance by percentage that it makes zero difference in any election whatsoever. It is, it's, it's fake. Like, the reason why they say that they want it is completely fake. But... I'm willing to compromise on that. Like, I don't care about people being able to, show, having to show their ID to vote. But the problem is that they use it in order to disenfranchise Democratic voters. Uh, they close down polling locations in Democratic districts. They close down DMVs in Democratic districts so that it is harder for Democrats to get IDs that they need to vote. And also, getting an ID is not free. And they know that people that are poor and can't afford the $80 to get a driver's license are not going to be able, you know, are, are then not going to be able to vote for Democrats. So it is a tool that the right uses to try to disenfranchise voters. So if you really want voter ID, like if that's what you're, that's what you're saying that that's important to you, then I say make driver's licenses free and also make it illegal to close down polling locations and DMVs in Democratic neighborhoods. And that is my compromise for the right on voter ID. And I will not hold my breath for them picking me, for them uh, taking me up on that. Uh, because again, they're not arguing in good faith. You know, they literally just do uh, whatever they want and then justify it later. Steven says, nothing is free, my guy. Lots of things are free. <laughs> that is not a good political argument, my friends. You know, nothing's free. All right, case closed. Nothing should be free. Goodbye. <laughs> Good Lord. Uh, the Marsala says, dang, everyone who isn't Democrat is a Russian operative. Uh, well, not everyone, but just the people that are, you know, trying to advance Russian, you know, uh, priorities. You know, you look at an interview with Jill Stein and Mehdi Hassan where she would not say that Putin was a war criminal. Uh, listen to every Republican who is saying that Ukraine is our enemy. Fucking the Russia paid fucking podcasters and live streamers to push Republican right-wing narratives. Why would Russia do that? <laughs> you know? uh, with the tax cuts and policies Harris is trying to do, who is going to pay for those funds? Um, well, the tax cuts would be for middle-class Americans and below, and that would be coupled with tax hikes on the most wealthy 
people in this country and also uh, giant corporations that can afford to pay their fair share. Uh, there is also the funding that we are doing for the IRS that is already paying dividends. I think they've recovered something like $50 billion from rich tax cheats that way. So yeah, there's no, there, the funding issues in this country are made up. If we literally, if we just tax rich people what they owe, then we'd be able to pay for fucking everything. Universal basic income, universal health care, universal, uh, you know, what do you call it? Universal education. Uh, let's see here. Voter ID is fine, but every U.S. citizen should be sent one for free. It's our right to vote. I completely agree with that, Randy Bailey. Uh, YLD2 Dave, if I work hard and make more money, why should I pay a larger percentage in taxes? Well, okay, so here's the thing, uh, buddy. There's a couple of different uh, issues that I have with that argument. Like, you're saying that you work hard, and that is the reason why you make more money. So, like, what are you, an investment banker? You're an entrepreneur. You're something. You're a CEO. You're one of those occupations that gets more than a working-class person who is, like, a construction worker or a McDonald's worker or a Walmart worker or whatever. I do not believe that those people are working less hard than you. And if they are working less hard than you, then I do not believe that they are that you are working 100 or 200 times harder than they are. But that is the income inequality that we are currently dealing with. So on a logistical level, we do need to rebalance that scale and taxing the rich is part of that. But as far as like why should you, besides the fact that it's the right thing to do, besides the fact that it would make the country better, besides the fact that we wouldn't have to uh, you know, deal with people living on the streets because they'd be able to fucking finally afford to live. Hey, I got a new team member. Fantastic. But here's, here's the thing. You are using more government services as a rich person. If you have more things, then you need more police to protect your things. If you own a company, then your employees are using the road to get to work every day. So that road benefits you more than everybody else who is driving on that road. So yeah, you should pay more. If you have more property, and then that is more property that could potentially burn down, which means that the firefighters in this country are more on call to deal with your shit than everybody else's shit. So yeah, you should pay more. Yeah, you should pay more. You owe more. You know, the, the, the systems that we have that dictate who gets paid for what in this country, they're not written in stone. They weren't handed down to us by God. It is like, you know, it's like a game. It's like a game that needs to be rebalanced where what, some players are fucking kicking ass and other players are just getting their asses handed to them. And someone needs to look at this and be like, well, this isn't fair and it's not making for a good game. Hold My Stones said, did he just say more of your money will get rid of homelessness? Yeah. Yeah, if you put more money into the government, then we could use that money to end homelessness. What a non-controversial thing to say that I have said that you had a problem with for some fucking reason. Uh, Dylan says, no, you don't owe more because you are giving hundreds of jobs. Got a lot of, got a rich, rich bootlickers here in my chat. Uh, this guy says, uh, Jay, a whole bunch of letters and numbers, says vote libertarian if you're a Republican. I mean, I think they should do that because that takes more votes away from Trump and he is a... He is a unique threat to everybody's lives. But also, libertarianism is kind of a nonsense political philosophy. Every place that has tried it has come up with massive issues. There was a state in the Northeast. There was a city in the Northeast that tried that, and then the town got overrun by bears. So I think that any, any political system that makes your town vulnerable to bears is probably not a great political system. Why didn't Obama nationalize the banks and restructure them? Well, J letters and a whole bunch of numbers, that is a... That is a massive thing to do. And if a Democrat tries to do that, then the entire all of America would have exploded. Like every person on the right wing media would be crying communist, socialist fucking nonsense. And if, even people in the mainstream media would be like, this is the most insane thing that a person has ever done. Gah! And Obama being the first black president, you know, uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates said it best. You know, he had to walk on ice for eight years, and he managed to do it without slipping. No, zero scandals in the uh, by in the Obama eight years. Uh, so yeah, you know he was somewhat shackled by the fact that America was going to judge his presidency exponentially harder than anybody anybody before or after him. So you know I don't mind him not doing big swings like that. Uh, big time wall one one zero one says, "How is Trump a threat to our lives?" Excellent question. So. 
Trump encouraged global instability by not staffing our State Department. There were embassies all around the globe that were completely empty. Uh, He inflamed tensions in the Middle East by kicking sand into the face of all the countries surrounding Israel by having these fake normalization deals with uh, called the Abraham Accords that, you know, didn't include those nations there. Uh, He also moved the embassy to Jerusalem which, you know, inflamed tensions in the region. He told all of our, you know, allies to go eat rocks, go kick rocks, and he praised dictators and authoritarians, which made it seem as though they could do fucking anything, and they recognized, oh, well, if we we can do shit and Trump will have our back, that'll be great. Uh, Let's see what else, you know. uh, Look at Project 2025. There is, you know, there are things in there that will threaten the lives and health of everybody in this country, uh, including a national abortion ban. They're talking about tracking pregnant women. Uh, he's talking about shooting protesters, talking about deporting protesters. You know, the mass importa- deportation plan would be a fucking nightmare. There'd be tanks rolling down the streets of American cities. You know, uh, there's, there's really no way to exaggerate the threat of Donald Trump. Like, he really is... He would be the worst person to be president in 2025. So, you know, not to mention the fact that he attacked <laughs> attacked America on January 6th. He led an insurrection on January 6th. He is an insurrectionist. He is against America. So, you know, there you go. You know, he was all over the Epstein flight logs. He has been accused of essay by over two dozen women, one of whom was 13 years old at the time. You know, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Rips cards. He has already been president and everything was better except Libs' mental health. <laughs> That's not true at all. Everything was better? Are you COVID? No. Are you kidding me? For three years, he coasted on the strength of the government and economy that Obama had built over eight years. And then in the last year of his presidency, there was a pandemic that he so thoroughly mishandled that 100,000 pe- extra people died. The economy crashed. Inflation spiked. Unemployment spiked. Uh, you know... <laughs> Doesn't seem great to me. Doesn't seem great. And violence, you know, violent crime spiked during the Trump presidency, towards the end of the Trump presidency. You know, so if you want to blame violent crime on somebody, blame it on your fucking boy, you know? Um, all right. Uh, okay. Yeah, you guys, ugh, this is such, this is so annoying. Normally, yeah, Emily, I'm with you, man. These comments, man. Normally, I'm a little bit better on uh, muting all these ding-dongs, but, uh, but uh, there's, I'm having some lag on my computer, and it's really slowing the process down. So, you know, this is what the stream is today, everybody. We're just batting away ding-dongs. Uh, Vinny says, why is 90% of the budget applicants for USCIS rather than more? That question doesn't make any sense. Uh, let's see here. Okay. Uh, Vinny. What's up, Vinny? You said, good to see you again. Good to see you as well, my man. Uh, let's see here. Uh, all right. Uh, good Lord. Yeah, just a bunch of right-wing ding-zongs on here. Okay. Uh, what do you think about Ashley Biden's diary, if you're all about morality? Oh, my God. Can't believe you guys are bringing Ashley Biden's diary into this. Trump was accused of SAing a 13-year-old girl. Biden is not running for president. So if that is a thing that you have a problem with, then you should not vote for Donald Trump. There you go. All right. Okay. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah. All right. I got to start muting some of these people because this is just getting annoying. All righty. Okie dokie. All righty. Thank you, everybody, for being here. You know, if you ever miss one of my lives, I have it up as a podcast. All the old lives are rebroadcast as a podcast that you can get on my website. Okay. Yeah, muting is taking way too long right now. I got to do something about my latency here. Okay. Okay. This guy says, mute me, please. I happily will. All right. 76 people that are here. Feel free to ask me anything about politics. I'm just sitting over here, mutant ple- people, and uh, let's see here. 
advocates rather than taxpayer money if immigration is top priority. Van Pelt, why does Kamala not answer questions yet? She's answered plenty of questions. She's already done a couple of interviews. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, guys, some of these questions, I'm, I'm here to answer questions, you know? I'm here to answer questions like if you... If you want to know what my opinion about something or if you're not sure like how certain things in the government works. But some of these things that you are asking me here, it's like you're testing me. It's like name, you know, like what's the what's the first letter on the fifth page of the blah, blah, blah document, you know? Yeah, man. OK, I don't get the Kamala doesn't uh, answer questions, things and doesn't talk about policy. She does. Well, at least uh, the people on the right don't, uh, they're not bound by facts. You know, they literally just say whatever the fuck they want and uh, hope that, uh, you know, hope that things stick. It is the authoritarian's playbook. If you just lie enough, then it will eventually feel like the truth. How do you feel about J.D. Vance saying his son eats 14 eggs in the morning? I mean, his, he's allowed to have his son eat as many eggs as he fucking wants. That is really at the bottom of my list of things that are weird as shit about J.D. Vance. So... You know, that is, uh, I wouldn't even put that in my top 10 of reasons why J.D. Vance is a weird and dangerous person. Really interesting how none of you right-wing people are talking about the uh, women that have been hurt by the abortion bans. You know, the two women that died in, uh, in Georgia because of the Trump abortion bans. Seems like that would be a really big deal for people that are uh, pro-life, you know. Do you guys not care about that? Do you guys not care about women dying unnecessarily because of the Trump abortion bans? Is that not something you guys care about? I find that so interesting. You talk about everything except for that. Uh, Mario, why do you condone high inflation? Uh, hint, it's not as simple as there's global inflation. <laughs> oh my God. You guys are so obnoxious. <laughs> You're so annoying. I can't believe you think that that's an okay thing to say to a person. Why do you condone high inflation? Hint, it's not as simple as saying there's global inflation. Well, I'll tell you why I don't condone global inflation. Well, I don't condone high inflation. Uh, you know, the Democrats are the party that brought inflation back down to pre-COVID levels. And it was the fault of the Trump administration that inflation got as high as it got because the supply chains got fucked during COVID and also Trump gave Putin a lot of cover to invade Ukraine and that increased gas prices and... Uh, the de uh, Department of Housing and Urban Development under Trump didn't build enough houses, and so we had fewer, you know, less supply, and so that raised prices on housing. Uh, and then all these greedy corporations decided to raise prices and hide it under the mask of inflation. And, uh, you know, so all the price increases that we have been suffering under have mostly just gone into rich people's pockets. But yeah, I trust the political party that took inflation from wherever the fuck it was, what was it, like 6%, something like that, back down to 3%. I think it was at 9% at one point. Uh, so yeah, from 9% back down to pre-COVID levels, that seems like uh, the thing that a very responsible democratic government does. And so I trust that party as opposed to the party that fucked things up so thoroughly that we had massive inflation in the first place. Mario. A uh, bunch of letters says, do you think that the Electoral College is going to be the cause of the demise of democracy? No, no. I mean, I think that if people vote for... Uh, an authoritarian fascist like Donald Trump, then I think that that will hasten the demise of America. But, you know, they're still fighting them bones. It'll just be a lot harder and more dangerous. Uh, so, you know, uh, I, can't, I can't stress enough how dangerous a second Trump term would be. And if anybody is curious, if I got 54 people left in the live right now. If anybody's curious why a second Trump term is going to be worse than the first Trump term. Just listen to this, all right? This is the most important part of my life. Just pay attention to this, okay? The Republican Party was completely different in 2016. There were a lot more centrist, moderist, moderate uh, Republicans that had a moral foundation. You know, your John McCain's, your Adam Kinzinger's, your Liz Cheney's. Uh, they're all gone now. And they have been replaced with right-wing extreme psychopaths like, uh, you know, Laura Loomer and Marjorie Taylor Greene. And they will literally do anything that Trump wants them to do. You know, there's not going to be any soft resistance of a John McCain or a Liz Cheney in a second Trump administration. Also, Trump nominated and sat in his administration a bunch of centrist moderate Republicans. You know, people like Jeff Sessions and Bill Barr weren't great. In fact, I would say that they were bad. But they didn't go along with everything that Trump wanted 
to get done. Uh, and he's not going to make that mistake again. He's only going to be putting people in his administration who are just going to do whatever the fuck he wants them to do. Also, the judiciary was a lot more moderate than, than it is now. I'm not even talking about the Supreme Court. Like, there were judges that had been nominated by Repub both Republicans and Democrats that stood up to Trump. But now over 230 judges have been sat by Trump. Trump loyalists like Eileen Cannon and, uh, what's his name, uh, Matthew Kaczmarek, who literally are just, they're spitting in the face of law and just doing whatever it is they can to help Donald Trump. Uh, the Fifth Circuit has been completely fucked by the Trump administration, not to mention the ultra-right Supreme Court that has a supermajority that ruled that presidents are not legally liable for the things that they do in office. Think about all the laws that Trump broke, all the shitty things that he did while he was office with the threat of going to jail and now remove the threat of going to jail and think about how much worse that is going to be. And then lastly, he didn't have a plan in 2016. He didn't think he was going to win, but they have a plan now. Project 2025, look it up. It is the Trump plan. His name is in there over 300 times. It was written for him. The Heritage Foundation wrote a different plan in 2016. The Trump administration implemented two thirds of it. The people that he's going to be appointing and working with and under him, they're going to fire, you know, regular ass government employees and replace them with Trump loyalists. It will be a fucking nightmare. And it is you cannot there's there's no way to exaggerate how dangerous and bad it would be. So, you know, if, uh, you know, there's if anything is going to come out of this this mess of a live with all these fucking ding dongs that have been having a bad way. Then think then then that is the thing that I want you guys to focus on because that is, you know, it is an existential threat to this country. Trump has denounced Project 2025 so many times. Well, he's a liar. He lies a lot. He's lying. Then he's on video saying Project 2025 is great. Over 100 of his former and current staffers are writers on Project 2025. So you can miss me with that bullshit. Uh, Melinda, what do you think about the tariffs Trump wants to impose when he is president? They would essentially raise prices on everything in this country for working class Americans. So uh, it would be it would be a disaster for a country that is currently already mired in a cost of living crisis that Democrats have just begun to unfuck the damage of that uh, Republicans caused. Linda, all caps, he is not associated with Project 2025. Well, that's weird because his name is in it over 300 times. Uh, would Kamala economic plan be super expensive for the taxpayers or is she going to tax the rich? She's going to tax the rich. Uh, and just about her economic plan specifically, 16 Nobel Prize winning economists and Goldman Sachs, Goldman Sachs, which is not a progressive organization, have all said that Harris's plan will be better for the economy and better for the country than Trump's economic plan. Uh, and her plan is to to tax the rich and use that money to help fund the rest of the government and the and make lives easier for everybody else in this country. Uh, even though interest rates came down, will housing prices come down or is that deflation? So there are policies that Harris is talking about implemented that would potentially help with bringing housing prices down. Uh, the you know tax incentive for new house buyers. Uh, she has pledged to build three million new units. Uh, the, so there's a big difference also between the housing that was built during the Trump administration and the housing that was built during the Biden administration because the Department of Housing and Urban Development was led by Ben Carson during the Trump administration, and, then, and Ben Carson did not have any experience in that, and he cut the department's budget by $7 billion. And so fewer homes got built, so we were suffering from a, a supply shortage partially because of that. Uh, also, because interest rates went down to basically zero during COVID, a bunch of private equity was taking out money and buying single family, family homes with it. It's the reason why you were seeing all these news stories of like, you know, lines around the block to see like one free house. It was because private equity was just trying to suck up every single family home that they possibly could so that they could have a monopoly on housing in this country and turn us all into renters for all time. Uh, there is a proposal that is being put forward by the Democrats to make it illegal for private equity to own single family homes. So in addition to having somebody in charge of housing and urban development who actually knows what the fuck they're doing, in addition to funding that department, in addition to pledging to build three, three million new houses, and in addition to giving a credit to new home buyers, the Democrats are also thinking about trying to, they would need to pass it, of course, they would need to have the House and the Senate in order for that to, to work, 
Uh, they are they are working on a bill that would force private equity to sell all of the single family homes that they sucked up during the pandemic. That would flood the market, which would drastically reduce housing prices. Additionally, rent prices were skyrocketing because we discovered the Biden just Justice Department discovered that there was this software that uh, renters were using to uh, what do you call it to price fix. They they were they were coordinating a price fixing scheme that was artificially inflating rental prices everywhere in this country. So all of those policies put together should bring down housing and rental prices significantly. Uh, but you know, again, that stuff needs to get passed in order for that to be you know to be effective. But even without that one bill being passed, just putting Kamala Harris in office is going to have a huge effect on uh, on housing prices. MNMUU2 says, I'm voting for a felon instead of a dishwasher. Um, really weird that you would say dishwasher like it's a pejorative, you know? Like, do you think all dishwashers suck? This guy thinks that all dishwashers suck. Let's, let's try to figure out the next restaurant that he eats at and let all the dishwashers know that he thinks that dishwashers suck. Luke 10 says, I'm going to take a wild guess on who you're voting for. You don't have to guess. I vote for Democrats, and I'm not fucking embarrassed about it at all. Uh, Luke 10 says, knew it. <laughs> well, we got a real fucking detective over here. <laughs> I've been talking for fucking how long? How long have I been on here? What time? What fucking time is it? I've been on here for an hour talking about how great Harris is and how shitty Trump is. And this guy, th this guy thinks <laughs> he's got it all figured out. I think that this guy might know who I'm voting for. Uh, Bitch Please says, oh, everything is Trump's fault. Well, he did a lot of bad things. So, yeah, you know, if, uh, if there's a kid running through my apartment with a baseball bat breaking things, and I start pointing out all the things that are broken, after the fifth or sixth thing, that kid, oh, I guess I broke everything then. I guess I broke everything. Yeah, you did. <laughs> Uh, is there any countervalence to the increasing role of money in politics? I'm not really sure what you mean by countervalence. Like, oh, like, is there anything that we can do about money in politics? I mean, you know, I sound like a broken record here, but the only party that is serious about getting money out of politics is the Democratic Party. So if you really care about getting money out of politics, then you should vote for Democrats. The Republicans have done everything that they can to whittle away at election finance reform laws so that they are basically null and void. The right-wing Supreme Court ruled that a bribe is not a bribe unless it happens before you do something. But if you do something that, you know, everybody, everybody, you know, all the rich people love, and then they give you a whole bunch of money afterwards, that doesn't count as a bribe, I guess. Uh, yeah, you know, Ted Cruz sued to make bribery uh, easier to do. So, yeah, I don't... Uh, I think that if you're worried about money in politics, then you got to vote for the only party that's going to take it seriously. Uh, if delegates can choose whoever they want as a candidate, what are the point in, in primaries? Daniel Robinson, excellent question. So for most of the history of our country, uh, the parties just picked their nominee with absolutely zero input from the, the voting populace. And uh, this changed famously in the 70s when uh, everybody wanted, uh, you know, I fucking forget who that was against the Vietnam War to be the Democratic nominee, but then the Democrats nominated somebody else who was not not against the Vietnam War, and then there was a giant riot outside of the convention center in Chicago. Uh, and so then, you know, the Democratic Party decided they were going to have an open primary and have people vote on it. But the Democratic Party is a private organization, and they have rules in place for... If, say, for example, you have a primary and then the main person drops out, they have rules for how to handle that. And they followed the rules, and then Kamala Harris became the nominee. So, there you go, buddy. Uh, Hubert Humphrey. Thank you, Ben Schroeder. I appreciate it. Uh, random crap. Opinion on the Marcellus Williams case. It's a fucking travesty, and I think that it is unconscionable. It is just another example of the right-wing Supreme Court justices being soulless ghouls who do not care about innocent people being put to death. Uh, the death penalty is a monstrosity. It does not deter crime. We do not have a 100% success rate with figuring out exactly who is guilty of what crime. 
And in that situation, if we cannot be 100% certain of who is guilty of what, then it is immoral and it is illogical to have a death penalty. You know, I think it's really interesting that the Trump administration rushed like a dozen death penalty cases through beforehand, it, it, which is so bananas to me. It's like he just really wanted to kill like as many people as he could, even though it was like only 12 people. He's like, we got to get them. We got to get those, you know. And just, you know, another example of Republicans being shitty and Democrats not being shitty. You know, the Democrats were the ones fighting for that guy. Uh, Daniel Robinson said, I would have voted Democrat if they would have gave RFK a chance. I don't know what you mean by that, Daniel Robinson. Like, it is not the Democrats' job to give third-party candidates a chance. It is, they, what, what, is the, what is the point of that? You know, it was his responsibility to get on the ballot in all the different states he wanted to be in. It was his responsibility to raise funds. It was his responsibility to build a coalition. He didn't do any of that. All he did was go on fucking podcasts and tell weird-ass stories about stealing dead bear carcasses and leaving them in his fucking car all day. But he's got a fucking worm that he got in his brain that ate a whole bunch of his brain before doctors caught it. He fucking killed a whale with a chainsaw, <laughs> you know? The, the man is a liar, he's bananas, he's a spoiler candidate, so yeah, you know, I you could miss me with that nonsense. Uh, Red Red Hans, what's going on? It's really good to see you again. You had the best questions uh, on my live last week. Thank you so much for being back here. Uh, this is not a question, though, that you put here. P. Diddy has stated that Bill Clinton protected him. I wonder what other politicians he had dirt on. You know, I think anybody who is running a sexual cabal the way that P. Diddy was and the way that Jeffrey Epstein did, I'm sure they have a lot of power because they have a lot of blackmail material on people. And we know that Bill Clinton is, you know, what do you call it? Uh, not a great guy, uh, you know. So I would not be surprised if he was involved in the uh, P. Diddy escapades as well. And, you know, I don't mind. I don't care if we have to throw Bill Clinton in jail to also get everybody else that was on the Epstein Flight logs, then fucking throw him in jail. I got no lo loyalty to that dude. Yeah, yeah, she does. But Biden also had plans, etc., and didn't do a lot of them. Student loan forgiveness. Daniel Robinson, he actually did do student loan forgiveness. Over 160 billion dollars of student loans were forgiven by the Biden administration, and he would have done more if it wasn't for the ultra right wing Supreme Court uh, that tried to stop him. Uh, Aiden Jill Stein shows up at every election with another cause that doesn't ever materialize. Yeah, she's a fake. She's a fraud. She's a phony. She's a Russian plant. Uh, Josh Van Allen, do you think there should be a separate bill of rights for corporations from individuals? No, I think corporations are doing fucking fine on their own. I'm down for a second bill of rights, like the kind that FDR proposed, uh, where we have a right to clean air and clean drinking water and a right to a living wage and shit like that. You know, but that didn't get passed, unfortunately, after the New Deal. Do you think there's a slight possibility that the Dems can take the House, Senate, and presidency? Absolutely, Melinda, absolutely. With abortion being on the ballot in as many states as it is, we are... Uh, competitive in a record number of states. Uh, we have already cleaned up the Senate map in Wisconsin, which by itself should give Democrats the House back. Uh, and, we, you know, it's neck and neck for the Senate. It's not a very good Senate map for Democrats right now. We're, we are fending off a lot of positions and we are being competitive in a lot of states that are not great for us, but it is well within our reach. Uh, we just have to do work. We just have to do work. We have to volunteer. We have to donate. We have to make phone calls. Uh, we have to... We have to talk to our friends and family about voting. We have to make sure that we are putting in the effort because, and this is something that I can't stress enough, this democracy is ours. It belongs to you and me. And so if there are things that we want to get done in this country, we have to be part of the solution. We have to do it. I just finished reading a great book about this called Democracy or Else. Uh, I highly recommend that book. If anybody has questions about like how to be more involved in politics and what are some great ways that we can have positive, productive change in this country. So go check that out. Uh, the polls are saying this election is a coin flip at the moment. How? Uh, you know, the Electoral College, gerrymandering, the Senate map, uh, Republican propaganda, muddy in politics, there's the Supreme Court. There's a lot of reasons. Uh, as a woman, I'm so scared of conservatives in Project 2025. Melinda, I am not going to assuage that fear at all. It is as scary as you think it is. And I am going to do, I'm working my hardest. I'm canvassing in Nevada and I'm canvassing in Pennsylvania. I've already done two phone shifts uh, for uh, Senate candidates. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm working. I'm doing the work. Part of the reason why I do this live is to try to encourage people to get more involved in politics so that we can, you know, so we can keep bad shit from happening like that. Uh, let's see here. Red Right Hans says, thanks for the book recommendation. Any others? Yeah, I like... Um, uh, fucking, what's the dude's name? Anand Jardas has a book called Winner Take All, Winners Take All, about how billionaire philanthropy is 
just uh, bullshit and that billionaires are never going to contribute to any kind of uh, charity that is going to threaten their position at the top of the plutocracy. And so I highly recommend that book as well. Um, let's see here. What else did I like recently? You know, this is not a this is not a book, but I loved Rachel Maddow's uh, Ultra podcast, which is about Nazis in America during World War II. Uh, and both seasons are absolutely fucking incredible. So highly recommended. Highly recommended. Let's see here. Ducky Dave says, "Do you think Florida will flip blue? I think it has the possibility. If we were dealing with a fair electoral system in this country, then I think it would be a shoe in. But unfortunately." Florida has been run by Republicans for a really long time, so they have been able to do all of the sneaky shit that makes it easy for them to win elections. And, you know, these states, they come down to a percentage or two. And so closing down polling locations in Democratic neighborhoods and voter ID and, uh, you know, putting a poll tax on people who have already paid their debts to society, that stuff can have a difference, you know? But we have a lot going for us. We have good candidates, and we have abortion being on the ballot in Florida. So... Uh, it's definitely a possibility, but I have been have had my heart broken by Florida and Texas too many times politically for me to put any of my time and energy there. So I am focusing on other states, uh, you know, Sun Belt, Blue Wall, Pennsylvania, Georgia, North Carolina. Those seem to be better states to focus on than Florida and Texas, which are, you know, the the worst fucking states. <laughs> they really are. Uh, thoughts on Orban? He is as close to a dictator as you can get in a democracy. So he's not a great guy. Uh, Syria, felons can't vote in some states, so why is one able to run for president? Well, it's the air bud rule of government. You know, it's like there's no law that says a felon can't run for president. So it's an oversight, unfortunately. Do you think the Harris administration will take serious action against the climate crisis? ADRNS.log. That is going to be my final question today. I'm so excited. Uh, that we that we got a good final question. Uh, <laughs> oh, I really do want to do this pro-lifers argument too. All right, okay. So here's I'll do I'll try to do both of those. Okay, so we'll do pro-life second, and we'll do uh, climate change first. Okay, so uh, Chris Hayes actually just had a climate change expert on his podcast recently that talked about the Inflation Reduction Act. They also did a policy, They also did a podcast uh, on. The Saturday edition of What a Day, which is a Korean media podcast where they talk about that. Like, why isn't Harris talking more about uh, climate change? And here's the reason why. The Inflation Reduction Act has moved the needle so much in favor of climate action that the only thing we need to do is not get in the way. You know, we can put our foot on the accelerator if we like, and I think, personally, I think that we should. But, uh... There, the things that the Inflation Reduction Act investment has accomplished already are monumental and are going to be paying dividends for decades. Now, the only thing that I need from a presidential candidate personally is just for them to be a Democrat who is not going to fuck up what has already been accomplished by the IRA. Uh, if we can do other things like, uh, you know... Uh, you know, not further subsidizing fossil fuels and shit like that, that would be a plus. The problem is that we have huge energy needs in this country. And so until we can take our foot off, until we make sure that we have all the energy that we need from renewables, we can't really afford to take our foot off the gas as far as like fracking and oil and shit like that. Because otherwise, if there are any energy outages during Democratic administrations, then people are going to lose their mind and they're going to say this is the fault of renewables and Democrats are going to get fucking excoriated, which is just, you know, another part of my treatise about how Democrats never get any credit and Republicans never get any blame because Texas has its own fucking energy grid. They've been run by Republicans for the last 20-ish fucking years or whatever and their energy grid fucking goes down all the time and nobody's saying shit about that. <laughs> nobody's saying that that's Republicans' fault. Nobody's saying that's the fault of fossil fuels, you know? So, Yeah. Uh, the short version is, I ramble, I've been rambling a lot today. The short version is that the IRA has done so much and is set up to do so much good in the future that all we need is to have a Democrat in office who's just going to let that continue. And if we do have a Democrat in office, then there could potentially be more legislation going forward. Uh, you know, when we have a Democrat in office who is nominating somebody to head the EPA, for example, that agency has a lot of power to 
make sure that we are continuing to do right by the IRA going forward. Now, the Supreme Court is trying to kind of fuck the EPA over with their Chevron decision. So that's going to be a big fucking deal. And that's going to be a political fight going forward. But, you know, that's the that's the shit with democracy, man, is that the bad people have a lot of money and power and they're going to do whatever they can to stop progress. And we just have to be cool and vigilant about it and recognize who the good guys are and give them as much support as we possibly can. Arguments for pro-lifers. Okay, here it is. We disagree, you and I, pro-lifers, and we are living in a country where we need to have some sort of compromise between people of different beliefs. So you want to get rid of abortion. You want abortion not to exist anymore. My compromise is that let's work on legislation that will decrease the number of abortions that happen. Uh, and I'm willing to tell you some of the ideas that I have that are going to decrease abortion. But what we have found is that making abortion illegal, not only does it not decrease abortion, but it increases uh, infant mortality and uh, uh, the mortality of mothers. More, more pregnant women are dying now because of these uh, abortion laws that have been passed. And it is increasing suffering. It is increasing the suffering of women where, you know, two women in Georgia died because they couldn't, you know, be seen by a doctor because they were worried about being legally liable for abortion. Uh, women have had to be in airlifted to different hospitals while they are in pain because re doctors are refusing to operate on them and give them the life-saving abortions that they need because they're worried about legal ramifications for saving these women's lives. And um, so let's talk about actually reducing the number of abortions in this country. Sex education, family planning, uh, increasing the minimum wage, uh, free or less expensive child care, um, and... Uh, maternity and maternal and paternal leave for people that are pregnant. These are all policies that actually decrease the number of abortions. If we want to decrease the number of abortions, that's what we should be doing, not making abortion illegal. Now, similar to the fact that Republicans are not doing anything about these draconian abortion bans that are hurting and sometimes killing women, they are also not on board with increasing the minimum wage, family planning, sex education, and paid family leave. Why is that? It just seems to me more bad faith that they don't give a shit about actually stopping abortions. They just want women to have to go through this shit. They like it when people are desperate. You know, I have a longer, <laughs> if you can believe, I have a longer speech about that, but that is the... That is the long and short of it. All right. Uh, I, I, I got a little tired on <laughs> this one, guys. I'm going to be I'm going to be honest with you. I, I got a little tired doing this one today because of all of the because uh, of all the trolls and because uh, and because my my computer was lagging and I was trying to do too many things at once. Uh, so thank you again, everybody, for being here. Sorry, this one was a little bit weird. Uh, thank you all for the questions. Thank you all for the support and the gifts. Uh, 23,000 likes. That is even more than yesterday. Oh, and 105 chat. That is great. Thank you so much, guys. All the support that you give me in this channel makes it easier for me to continue doing these, and I love doing these. Uh, I will be back here tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you so much again, everybody, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye.